close your eyes and settle in with the breath. Think of the breath cradling you, keeping you comfortable, at ease. Of all the different elements or properties of the body, it's the one that you can control the most. So use that possibility for control to create a sense of well-being inside. You can see what kind of breathing is too long or too short, too fast, too slow. And then adjust it so it's just right. We can try in long, out short, in short, out long. There's lots to play with here. And we need this sense of well-being inside. We live in a world where we're subject to all kinds of things. We need our own resources that we can depend on. So when things outside get bad, we have a good place to go inside, a source of strength inside. So that in our interactions with the world, even though th bad things might get thrown to us, we don't throw things, bad things back. And we would learn how to sidestep the bad things that are getting thrown at us. Years back, when a group of arahants came to see the Buddha, this was right after he had started teaching, and they were newly minted arahants. He gave them a praise of the teaching. He started with the theme of endurance. Kanti is a Pali word, and it also means forbearance, patience, tolerance, your ability to put up with things. He said this is going to be one of the basic principles of the teaching that he was going to teach. If you want to burn away the defilements in the mind, burn away the greed, aversion, and delusion in the mind. It requires that you have some endurance. And a good way to build up endurance, of course, is to build strength inside, like we're doing right now with the breath. And then learn how to think about things in a way that you're not causing yourself unnecessary harm or suffering around them. There are basically two things the Buddha talks about in terms of enduring. One is painful feelings, sharp pains in the body. And the other is harsh words from outside. The pains in the body, as you step back from them and notice how your perception of the pain is often what makes it worse. So ask yourself, what kind of perceptions do you have around pain? When there's a pain in the body, do you think that the pain has invaded the body, is it invading you? Does it have bad intentions toward you? Does it have a shape? Is it solid? These are all perceptions, and as the Buddha said, perceptions are like mirages, they're not necessarily true. So you have to investigate them. What is the actual sensation of the pain? And does it conform to their perceptions? Maybe you should drop your perceptions see what happens. As for harsh words, you start out by reminding yourself that the waves of speech in the human world are such that there are true words and false words, well-meaning words and ill-meaning words. Useful, useless, and true and false. And so when someone's saying something false or harsh with ill intent, useless things, you have to remind yourself this is just part of the normal way of the human speech. You're not being singled out unfairly while the rest of the world is not being singled out. Everybody's getting this kind of speech aimed at them at one time or another. And if you have nothing but nice words, you've got to go find another world. And then you look at the actual experience when someone says something harsh to you, ill-meaning, false. Tell yourself, well, there's a contact at the ear. And then when the contact ends, that's the end of the word, that's the end of the sound. Beyond that, it's what you've been doing with the sound, letting it reverberate around in your mind. Can you just leave it at the contact? Just tell yourself, a contact has made contact at the ear, and that's it. For most of us, we don't leave it there. We bring it in, and we create all kinds of stories around it. And it's the stories we create around it. Those are the things that are making us suffer. So when you learn how not to make yourself suffer like this, you find that you can endure all kinds of things. This is why the Buddha singled it out when he gave his praise of the teachings. That's what he started out with. Kanti, endurance, tolerance, patience, forbearance. And he didn't just say, well, put up with it. He said there's a skill to how you put up with it and you don't suffer. And a lot of his teaching will be found in those principles right there.